Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the starting 11 show. This is the first starting 11 show since Stephen Kenny has taken over. It's been a long time coming. I know these videos are hugely popular with our viewers. So, um, yeah, uh, it's going to be hard to predict Stephen Kenny's first team. But this is the team I would like to see go out and play Bulgaria on Thursday evening. Which is a game I know a lot of people have been wondering where is the game on. It is on Sky Sports. So... Um, and for some, some reason it's not coming up on the TV listings, but it is on there. Um, we'll get straight into it. The goalkeeper, I think, you know, we all know who the goalkeeper is um, and who we would all want in this situation. Dan Randolph, calm, cool, collective, really good for that. Defence, I think he's just so calm on the ball. He makes great saves, you know, more often than not. He keeps us in the game. And especially during the, the last campaign, I felt like he was one of our best performers. And without him being in that form, I think we could have lost some of the some of the bigger games. Um, and could have easily conceded against Gibraltar as well, which would have been a nightmare situation. But he saved us. That's what he's there for. And that's what he does brilliantly uh, time and time again for Ireland. So Darren's in goal for me. And I don't think you can really look past him in terms of uh, the goalkeepers. I think he's, you know, by far and away the best keeper. Uh, if you know, I know Quiven Keller has been brought in, uh, and Mark Travers, who I think this season could could then push Darren um, for the next campaign. I suppose you could probably say, uh, but I don't see him ousting him anytime soon. Over next year, he has a chance if he's number one for Bournemouth. But Darren Randolph in goal, and then I'm gonna stick our back four because I'm gonna go four three three formation because that's apparently what Stephen Kenny is gonna do. So there's no point in messing that around. So I'm gonna go. With a back four that he that he usually goes for, or well, sorry, Mick kind of went for, um, which was Seamus Coleman, right back and captain. Um, and I'll get to why I'm having uh, another certain right sided player um, will be fitted in the team, so don't turn it off just yet. We'll get to that. So, yeah, Seamus Coleman, I think defensively, we're going to need to be sound. I think Stephen will be looking to build on a good defensive unit, um, maybe hope to get a clean sheet just to get the, I suppose. Uh, the confidence up for the defence, not that the confidence or the defence needs it because, you know, we have a very good record between the back, I suppose, five, you could say, if you include Darren in there. So you've got Seamus there, captain, I think he's the leader of the squad, I think he's a great person to have around the squad. And then two centre-backs, Shane Duffy, who, again, when he plays for Ireland, he just goes up different levels and he's excellent for, for Ireland. Um, Sky Sports are, you know, linking him with a move to Celtic on loan. Which would be interesting. Celtic get him. That's a massive coup for them. Don't know if it's the best move for him in terms of uh, his career. If he wants to be, I suppose, maybe in terms of his legacy. I know he's a Celtic supporter and he'd want to go there. But now the fact that Celtic are after going crashing out of the Champions League. And maybe they could have done with him before they played that game. But such is life. It's still in the Europa League for now anyway. So, you know, if he, if he does go there and he can play Europa League, that's good. And that's a positive. Um... And look, if he gets to go and fulfil an ambition of playing for Celtic, because I know he was meant to go there before uh, when Brendan Rodgers was manager, but he, he ended up going to Brighton because they could offer more money at the time, which, you know, football's a short career. I do believe that players should go to the places where they can get the most wages while they can. Uh, but if he can get that loan, Celtic, happy days, well for him. And I think he deserves first-team football. Um, you know, Stephen Kenny came out the other day speaking about how good of a defender he was. He's obviously a huge fan of his. And then next to him, Johnny Egan, the best centre half we have. You know, I think he showed that this season. He was absolutely unbelievable this year. And I think it's hard to look past John in terms of you know defensive players, leaders. Again, look what he did for Sheffield United this season. They were so close to Europe, and he was a huge key part of that. Um, you know, he was constantly up there. And towards the end of the season, he was showing how much of a goal threat he is. I mean, himself and Duffy in both boxes are huge. Well, I suppose a huge threat in their box, but brilliant in our box. Um, he throws his body at everything. He played against Bulgaria already. He was actually captain. I think he gave away a penalty in that game. Um, but anyway, yeah, we are looking looking strong at the back. And the Stevens at left back then. Um, so that's keeping a right back and a left back in there with uh, Coleman and Stevens. I think Enda again. I spoke about John Egan and exactly the same. Enda established himself as one of the best left backs in 
the Premier League and in world football, I think, uh, this season. He's been absolutely fantastic for Sheffield United ever since he's moved there, really. Obviously got promoted last year, nearly got European football this year, finished quite high up in the Premier League. And, yeah, I mean, hard to look past him at left-back as well. I, I know he's got other options there with Robbie Brady and, and James McLean. He, he, he's, you know, came out and said that they might be players there as options, but end that for me, first choice all day long. And... Um, you know, happy to have him amongst the squad because I think he's a top, top player. Then midfield, I think I would like to see James McCarthy as a central defensive midfielder in the mid midfield three. Um, and then, you know, I'm looking around Malumbi and then I'd have Hendrick as the attacking midfielder. So I kind of have uh, James McCarthy hovering around with Malumbi, breaking up play, getting around the pitch. Um, Malumbi could probably do a bit more than McCarthy, just let McCarthy sit in front of the back four more, more so. With James McCarthy, you know what you're going to get, you know, he'll, he'll cover the full-backs. He decides that the full-backs are going up, you know, that James McCarthy will get across and cover. And, um, you know, he does it really, really well. I think a lot of people get confused with what type of player he is, you know, from being an Everton fan and watching him. I always know that even when... Martinez was manager, you had James McCarthy allowing the likes of Seamus Coleman to get up in support and then allow him to get into the box to score goals. I don't think Seamus will be doing that as much anymore. I don't think he has the legs to get up and down uh, as ma as much, but we'll get to kind of the right side and left side uh, afterwards. But I think if you have Malumbi there covering en like the energy he brings alongside McCarthy there, I think you've got a really good two. And then it allows Jeff Hendrick then to make the runs to get into the box and try and get a couple of goals, you know, get his confidence up and get people back on side, you know, people, you know, talk about Euro 2016 and, you know, he's been getting stick off everyone um, the last number of years saying his performances weren't up to scratch. Don't think he's been fantastic, but I don't think he's been terrible either. Um, don't think he's been uh, helped by tactics and so on, but I think he, he's a strong player in terms of... I think Stephen Kenny will get the best out of him and if he went with that midfield train and allowing him to get into the box you know, allowing him to make those late runs into the box and arrive late, you know, and coming on to balls. A bit like he did against Gibraltar and getting a couple more goals. I think he needs to add a bit more goals to his, uh, to his Ireland, I suppose, legacy, you could say. So I'd have him in there. Um, those midfield three, I think Jason Malumbi has earned it. I think um, Stephen Kenny is a massive fan of his. And I think these are the type of games to get me in to see Kenny cope at the top, top level. Um, he's been doing pre-season with Brighton, played against Chelsea last week. Um, you know, I don't really see... I don't know, is this Howard Hinn in there, who I think is a bit unlucky to, to miss out. He finished the season quite strongly with Villa as well. And then there's a couple of other midfielders in there who probably, you know, Harry Arthur finished the season with Fulham and Stephen Kenny's came out and raved about him as well. But for my midfield three, that's it. And then up front, now this is really difficult um, because I'm looking at... A front three, and uh, Didzy's obviously not there, Parrot's not there, but what we do have, uh, and for me, um, I would like to see start the game Shane Long as a centre forward. I would like to see him up there as a centre forward, and um, just because he has the experience. Otherwise, I, if Adam Eda was coming in with a bit of experience, I'd start him up top. But just for this one, just for the first one, I would like to see long start and then later in the game have Ida come off the bench after an hour we're half an hour to go and uh, really get at them but I think Shane Long he's played this role so many times for Ireland he's experienced he knows what to do um, you know and I think he'll be good for the players around him who are going to get into now so I think on the left hand side I would have Aaron Connolly um, as part of the front three uh, just a bit to the left like he did in that Armenia game for the under-21s. I think the form he's shown at the moment, and I know it's pre-season and stuff like that, but he's been scoring, he looks sharp in training. Um, Stephen Kenny really likes him, he's hungry, he wants to score goals. I think this season's going to be a huge season for him. I just hope, I'm praying, that he doesn't get any injuries. I hope he can just get goals and just have a really good season. Uh, I think playing alongside Shane Long up there would be brilliant for him. I think James McLean is really unlucky to miss out. Obviously, again, going on form, really unlucky. One slow player of the year and, um, you know, he's finished the season off really well. Michael O'Neill seems to be getting the best out of him. I think he's obviously worked with Stephen Kenny before. Uh, I think Stephen will get a good tune out of him too. 
um, when he does play him. But I just think for this game, I would like to. This is the theme I'd like to see. It's not necessarily the theme that's going to be picked. And then on the right hand side of the front three, I would put Matt Doherty in there. And the only reason you can't leave Matt Doherty after his move to Spurs, I just don't think you can have an Irish team without Matt Doherty in it. And I think the best way of getting the most out of him is having further up the pitch and not having him have such defensive duties because you have the midfielders there with the energy, it allows them to cover on the sides and then it allows Doherty to focus what he's good at, getting into the box and taking players on, getting into the box, scoring goals, sorry, uh, and also get, getting balls into the box and making assists, doing what he's really, really good at without having the defensive side of things to worry about because he has Seamus there and he has the midfield of James McCarthy and Jason Malumbi covering in there. So I think, I think it's a really balanced team. If you look at it all together, you might say, okay, Doherty um, playing on the right wing isn't balanced. But for me, I think it is. And you could only really put in Robbie Brady probably on the, on the right-hand side, who I know Stephen's a massive fan of as well, uh, or Callum Robinson. And for me, I just wouldn't have either of them uh, on there. I think Matt Doherty has to be in the team. He just made a 15 million move, which is, I know it's, it's a low value, but you know he is right now our highest performing player. You can't have him. A team without him in it and I don't think you can have an Irish defence without Seamus Coleman in it so that's how I would fit both of them in let me know your thoughts in the comments on this team and uh, yeah I mean it's an exciting bench then when you look at the bench you've got you've got Edie you've got McLean coming off the bench you've got um, Harry Arthur you've got even even in the in the in the fence, you've got Dara O'Shea there as well. So it's like, this, there's a good depth to the squad there. Either way, so um, you know after the hour mark, having Adam Eda coming on, running at you, Shawnee McGuire as well, pace. Uh, look, it's it's exciting. We've obviously beaten them before. We're gonna have a match preview. Gary's gonna be in Sofia. I'm gonna be doing a match preview live with him from Sofia. I'll be doing it here. Um, so yeah, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, leave your team your starting team in the comments and uh, I look forward to uh, to seeing what your team are. They're always interesting and these videos are always hugely popular with our viewers. So thanks very much guys. And I, oh yeah, if you're a returning watcher but you haven't subscribed, please do so. We're at eight and a half thousand and we're really pushing for that 10K now. We really want to get that. So if you're, if you're new and you're watching and you haven't subscribed, please give it a subscribe. It's uh, much appreciated. Thanks guys and I'll chat to you later, okay? All the best.